My baby calls me Mr. Baloney, but I like to believe my baby's only bluffing. <laughs> my baby calls me Mr. Baloney, but I like to believe my baby's only bluffing. I would like to indulge myself and share with those who are interested three instruments which I feel possess similarities. A microphone, a lens and a fountain pen. You may observe they're a similar size in length and that's because they are hand-sized. Beyond that, though, if I use the term loosely, they are transducers. The microphone certainly is, I think, strictly speaking, a transducer converts physical energy into electrical energy. Representation of the voice. The lens, on the other hand, doesn't do that, but it's an integral part of that process. The microphone gathers the sound if you like, this gathers the light, though it doesn't do any transducing itself. The fountain pen isn't strictly a transducer. You have a thought, who knows how this works. And it's translated into an intricate movement of your hand. And the fountain pen is the instrument which turns that int intricate movement into writing on paper. All three of these, well, I've got six actually, two of each, are beautifully made. I'm going to zoom in and uh, spend some time looking at them a bit closer and hearing what they sound like to some extent, though physical resonance and explain why I like the examples I have here. This microphone is a Biodynamic M88. Fits the hand very well. The weight is it's weighty but it's not heavy. Almost feels um, slightly alive. I find that a property of brass but could be baloney. You can hear that sound. This, I believe, is steel. Very fine, nicely done. This is etched, no, engraved, and then filled. Personally, it's all I need straight body. Looks kind of functional, but very well done. Just uh, not flash somehow. I don't know. Another microphone I like. Oh, and of course, it performs exceptionally well. Designed in 1962. Wouldn't be much good if it didn't. This one, the Earthworks SR314. Stained steel. And I've said many times, I have a feeling that this is somewhat present in the sound. Maybe not as ridiculous as you might think because the sound waves must vibrate this to some extent. This one, very weighty with a slightly textured finish, as you can hear. Moving on to a Pentax 85mm 1.4 portrait lens, mounted on a Pentax LX body, both kind of 80s. This focusing 
very well damped, even when fully out. I can't detect any play in the threads. This on the front is a lens hood. And the idea being that, as you can see, as I turn it, well, you've got two lights here, so you're stuffed. <laughs> but the idea is that if it was the one light, usually the sun, one main light source, it stops the light from hitting the front element there, which creates flare and ghosting. However, this hood unscrews. A little bit time consuming, but hey, there's the lens itself. I'm also got on the front here a filter. It's a German one. I prefer to have the same uh, manufacturer, Pentax filters, with their super multi coating. Let me just explain that. I take this filter off. The reason for having a filter on there. Good quality filters don't degrade the um, the image. But as you can imagine, every bit of glass you put, well, they don't degrade it perceptibly, but you can imagine every bit of glass you put on there is gonna make a difference no matter how well it's made. This then I keep on to protect the front element from any damage. Lens is kind of irreplaceable because it's old. Uh, people say with a lens hood on the front, is protected from damage anyway, so if you knock into a wall or whatever, the lens hood will take it. And um, yes, that's true. But being a bit cautious, so there is the front element. You'll notice colours, very pleasing. You'll notice also that when I turn it towards that light there's not as much reflection in there as there was with the filter, so that filter probably isn't multi-coated, which is why it would be nice to have the Pentax one, but because I use the lens hood as well. There are several layers of coating, which, now what do they do? They increase light transmission, which is why you can't see so much in the way of those big reflections. So they let the light through, which is what you want, of course. They also do things with correcting I believe aber aberrations and all sorts of other things. It's quite as fascinating to, it's beyond me, but uh, fascinating to study what they do with glass and all different types of refractive index glass. You know, it's not just glass, many to a hundred different types, I think, or more. And they mix and match and the shape. These older lenses were likely to be um, hand ground. These days it's done by machine, computer controlled. So what that meant was that these were not always the sample from one lens to another might not be exactly the same because of the hand grinding. So sometimes you get really good ones, sometimes average ones, sometimes ones are not so good. Here's another one. This is a 135. So it magnifies, pulls in closer and fast as well. This is a 135. Uh, this is a 85 millimeter, which refers to the focal length and 1.4 is the maximum aperture. You can see now with that other filter on there that there's much more reflection. So I shall bear that in mind. It's a fast lens. This is another fast lens, which uh, magnifies more than that one. There's reasons for that, which I've said and mentioned in another video. This is with a lens hood. This isn't the manufacturer's lens hood. The lens hood for this monstrous lens, actually the hood that they supplied wasn't all that nice. It was kind of a rubber thing, which did the job, I'm sure. This is somebody else's, but uh, it could probably do with being a bit longer, but hey. And again, this one's quite old, road-worn. It's been used a lot.
very damped. It doesn't move easily, even after all these years. I don't think it's because the grease has dried out. I think it's always like that. The sound of the aperture. And let me show you the blades, if I can. I've stopped down to F16, and I can uh, activate the lever on the side. Working perfectly after all these years. Moving on to the fountain pens. This is a classic Parker Centennial. And you can see I've got largish hands, but it fits very well. I've got it what they call posted at the moment. Excuse me. That means I've got the cap posted on the back of the pen. The pen is large enough for my hand unposted, but I prefer to post. This is fairly light. Some of them are metal, they're quite heavy, but this one I find with the counterbalance having that on the end just slows me down a bit when I'm writing because you can't, you know, there's less tendency to want to. And uh, yeah, that's the point. Or well, one of the points for me, I don't use these for scribbling notes. Screw thread. Writes very well indeed. Here's a current, made in England this one, uh, Parker, now I make them in France. This is an English one, UK one. This, I don't know where it comes from, Twisby, is it Korea? I'm not sure. This is a fairly inexpensive modern one. But very nicely done. It does have a rubber seal. When I screw this on, you can't tell that. But I can feel now something is stiffening up if I do that. And yes, that means that this writes very well, even if it hasn't been used for quite some time, because the rubber seal stops any evaporation. Also, this is what this one is like in my hand. I find this one maybe a little small there. Also it posts, and also posts with that rubber seal, so it's quite firm. Some pens don't post, just doesn't fit. Some do post, but they don't really grip, so the cap starts wobbling around a bit after a while, and others are quite secure. This one's very secure. The Parker is secure, but after a lot of writing, it will get a bit loose, so you just have to press it gently, not too much, because you don't want to break things. Again, posted. Very nice. Well, I've got that off my chest. And what I find with these instruments is that they influence the process. I don't know, just having something nicely made, provided they work well, has to come first, of course. But beyond that, I don't need uh, diamonds and studded and gold and so on. Okay, the pen I think might be gold plated, but it's not, you know, it's not a solid gold hold pen. So just nicely done. They must work very well, firstly. And then I find, um, if I get to know them and I like them, it's a silly thing really, isn't it? But using them seems to bring, I think, more out of me. I don't know. Maybe it's all baloney. <laughs>